Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Susan Marie Snyder made her debut as Julie Wendell Snyder on As the World Turns in May of 1989. She remained in Oakdale until December of 1995 and returned to the canvas twice, once in 1998 and for the second time, I believe, in 2002. Susan also appeared on Ryan's Hope, Another World, and Santa Barbara. She is an award-winning documentary filmmaker and has appeared on screen in a number of motion pictures, including one of my absolute favorite films of all time, Ruthless People, with Bette Midler and Danny DeVito. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. Susan just released her first novel, Love the Harmonizing Essence, co-written with her partner, Elijah Carter, and she will tell us all about it and her life on the big island of Hawaii. Please welcome to the locker room, Susan Marie Snyder. Hey, Susan, we, we got it to work. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. For oh, everybody sorry. watching. Yeah, yeah for everybody bit, watching. A little bit of a challenge today. Okay, so please bear with us. Uh, um, sound might not be so good, everyone. Yes. Uh, the sound was going in. <laughs> I think we're having a little. Oh, okay. Just, ju I'm just a little. Technical. Just, just a little delay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let's try. We'll try to make this work. Wow. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for being here. I can't hear you. Uh Oh boy. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. I can't hear you. Well, I can, you can't hear me. I am going to. Uh, You're breaking up my cell phone. Should we oh boy. Uh, try to connect again. We're gonna try and have Susan connect again. Bear with us. This is live and let's see what happens. I'm gonna try and call her, so stay stay with us. <laughs> and yes, Roseanne, you gotta love technology. Hey, Elijah, this is Alan. I, I kicked Susan off of the studio um, if you can just ask her to try to connect again, it just, she just might need to connect again. Okay. Thanks so much. Um, but Roseanne, yeah, Roseanne says, good luck. Uh, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, I agree with you all. Susan looked great. I wish I was on the Island of Hawaii right now. Um, have any of you been there before? Uh, I actually spent my honeymoon uh, on Kauai and Honolulu, which was pretty incredible. So let's hope I, Su Susan's gonna try and connect again. That's why broadband is, is uh, really important. <laughs> Trying to connect from an island must be a little difficult. Uh, decipher code, you're in Hawaii. Where are you in Hawaii? Infrastructure, 100%. Oakdalian, 100%. Oahu, loved Oahu, loved Loved Oahu. Any questions? I don't have a backup guest, Wilton. Sorry. <laughs> I wish I did, but I don't. Um, Little Miss Seattle, Julie Wendell.
Susan's hopefully trying again to connect. We'll see what happens. Wow, Susan was on Give Me a Break. I didn't recall that. Any questions for me? I don't think Susan was living there when I was on my honeymoon. My honeymoon was in 2013, so I'm not sure how long she's been there. I don't recall. <laughs> Lucinda moved heaven and earth to get rid of a lot of people, not just Julie. Uh, is that, how are you, Roseanne, for me? Because I'm doing all right. Just sweating a little here, waiting on Susan. Hopefully it'll work. I am having a nice summer, Terry. Um, glad that I am vaccinated and I can be around other people and family. I hope you are having a great summer. I hope all of you are having a great summer. I hope you and all your families are healthy. Duke, Michael Loudon, Jerry just mentioned. Here we go. I think Susan has just returned or is about to. She needs to turn on a camera. Uh, Susan needs to turn on her camera. She's trying. Let's try that again. Can you hear me, Susan? Hmm. There you are. No. We're trying, everybody. Bear with us. Bear with us. I'm going to put a, uh, put this on mute for a minute. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to give Susan a call. So um, she's going to try to use Elijah's computer, her partner's computer. The audio was working perfectly on that, but unfortunately we won't get to see her um, because that computer does not have a camera. But you all just did get to see her, so I hope you keep that image in, in your mind. And uh, we're going to try and get this audio part going momentarily. Um, I I see that Jerry, uh, a few people mentioned Larry Brigman. I would love Larry Brigman. I would love Eileen Fulton. I would love Lisa Brown. Um, hopefully one of these days we can make those work, but um, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. So is everyone having, I'm glad uh, 
all of you watching would be okay with the audio. Decipher code, yeah, connection, definitely where she is seems to be presenting a problem. So fingers crossed. Hope you all have some time to hang around. I know Michael Howland will hang around because uh, Michael is a very big Julie fan, Susan fan. I, I can see most of you are as well. Julie was a great character, paired with great people. I mean, Scott DeFreitas, Peter Boynton, her son, Jason Biggs. Ooh, the locker room. Who is your favorite, as it will turns, actor to work with? Oh, wow. I, I, that's hard. I mean, the Hughes family meant a lot to me as a fan growing up. Bob and Kim, you know, I don't know. I looked up to them. So, you know, meeting Don and Kathy and, well, and working with them, that was pretty cool. Um, Scott DeFreitas as well. Andy, I, you know, I think I've said it on the show before. It was the first time I ever called um, a show to complain when he was let go. Hello. Susan. I'm here. Yay. Can hear me? <laughs> we can hear oh. you. Oh, my God. We, we can yeah. hear you. So thank I'm you for for going the distance to, to make this work. Cause you the know, fans. there's always, always a workaround some way. There, there, there really is. And I, I said it earlier. I don't know if you heard me. Thank you so much for being here. Um, happy almost birthday. You have a birthday coming up. You've done right? your due diligence. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I, I grew up watching World Turns and like everybody here who is tuning in for you, we were big fans of Julie. So I'm really thrilled to talk to you. Oh, thank you so much. I really and appreciate it. And, and, and I'm holding up your book right now, which Woo! I did which I did start last night. So we'll get to that. But uh Okay. Hey, we'll, we'll get to that. So, um, you know, fans were asking because I kept saying Susan Marie Snyder. They were asking sure. about your about your name. So yeah. you now go by Suzanne Marie Sarah. Is it Sarah Din? Sarah Dwin. Sarah Dwin. What, Sarah Dwin. Um, what prompted you to change your name? Well, I <clears throat> left show business. I decided um, I wanted to just have a normal life for my kid, provide some stability. So I moved to Vermont full time and her father, who I'm sure you remember. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Antonio <laughs> Reyes. Antonio Reyes. Antonio Reyes. He had a lot of other names in there too, which I won't even attempt. But um, yeah, he and I had um, moved to his place in Vermont uh, while we were working on the show together. And so I, I wanted her to grow up there because it was just so beautiful. So I, I reinvented myself again, <laughs> uh, became a communications coordinator uh, for this international development consulting firm. So uh, nice. I did seven years until she went to college. Um, wow. And so I started looking at other ways of being creative without having to work in the industry. Because I'd done it, been there, done that, and you know, it's not um, it's not entirely kind to aging women. <laughs> so you 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 say that very uh, generously. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, which is really um, you know, with with people talent like yourself, it, it's just a shame that you know. I think it's it, it's weird that it's changing now. It should have changed much sooner. But I do. I feel like you know, it, it's yes. not the same as as it was well, when, when, when you were really in the thick of it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I watched a lot of women try to stay young looking. Mm -hmm. that song by Annie Lennox, keep young and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Be beautiful. Stay young and beautiful if you want to be loved. So <laughs> that's <laughs> started pumping up their lips, you know, and the collagen and all of that. And it just didn't look real and it scared me. And I said, okay, I, I need to just, I just need to leave quietly. <laughs> and uh, so that's what I did. I changed my name just as a kind of uh, ritual, leaving yeah. by the ingenue. Well, I, I the love wise the woman. 
Zen. I love Zen. Just to- well, I just like the way Suzanne sounded. And I was studying French. My, my mother was French, uh, more French Canadian, I think. But um, I like the way it sounded. And my French teacher called me Suzanne Marie. And I said, oh, wow, that's better than <laughs> Susie Snyder. And, um, so I made that legal change. As Sarah Dwin, I, I stole from a Welsh goddess. She was one of the old goddesses um, from, from uh, Britain, you know, back in the Celtic days. And she was a wise old goddess. And I said, I'm going to embrace her next. And so um, I left the ingenue behind and uh, embraced my wise woman. That's incredible. Do you speak French and- now? Oui, je parle un peu, mais je ne pratique pas ici. C'est très difficile pour oh, uh, beaucoup de gens. Anyway. <laughs> and 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 you, how's your daughter? You said college. What's she doing? Oh, my daughter's fierce. She's in your neck of the woods. She's in Queens. Oh, nice. She, she is a burlesque performer and a wow. designer. A what kind of designer? Costumes. Oh, she awesome. Elaborate costumes. Very, very talented. Went to art school. And um, yeah, she's just using all her creativity to have as much fun as possible <laughs> in New York Good during for her. all of the stuff. <laughs> but now she's finally coming out and uh, she, she loves what she does. And do you know if Peter's still in Vermont? Oh, yes. Yes, he's remarried to a wonderful woman, and um, they're very happy. They live in the farmhouse. So they've totally renovated that. And, yeah, he did theater for years um, with the local kids, brought people from the city up into the barn. They did this – has a beautiful renovated barn. And, um, yeah, they did that for years. That's so, so funny. Fan, fans always ask, for you, for Peter. Yeah, it's been uh, – so it, it's very nice that you're here. What brought you to the big island of Hawaii? I didn't want another winter. <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> I don't blame you. I, I realized winter was a choice. I could, <laughs> you know, choose. I could go visit winter if I wanted. Um, you know, I lived in Vermont and New York and winters are hard. And, um, you know, who doesn't have fantasies about going to Hawaii? And I had an opportunity to uh, explore this, this community that was here. It's since kind of closed. That closed in 2018. We had a, 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 vulc- a volcanic eruption. <laughs> it was quite dramatic. And we were all evacuated. So um, I left this community. And um, I really didn't want to go anywhere else. I traveled for a bit, went to... Uh, Canada, Montreal, and then uh, Vietnam, uh, just kind of waiting to see what was going to happen here on the island, if it was going to be livable or not. Um, And a friend called me and she said, well, things are calming down. Why don't you come back? I have a cabin on my land and you can just live there. And I said, yes. So (laughs) yeah, I wouldn't turn turn that down. I wouldn't turn that down. (laughs) No, it's on the coast. You know, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I I just pinch myself every day. And we have fans today watching from Hawaii. So where? uh, Aloha. Yes. I don't, uh, I think he said one person said Oahu. I'm not sure if there was somebody else, but Oahu Uh is definitely. Aloha, my neighbor in Oahu. (laughs) So who or what influenced you to become an actress? Soap operas. You grew up watching? Of course. With my mom. Which one? Ah, which one? Oh, she was an ABC fan. So we started in with Ryan's Hope and then went on through the afternoon with, uh, I don't know, all my children, General Hospital, uh, One Life to Live. Wow. You you know the lineup. Yeah. Today's uh, One Life to Live's 53rd anniversary of it started 53 years ago today. Oh. Uh, so was your, I hope your mom was alive when you appeared on Ryan's Hope. Oh yeah, she was, <laughs> she's now in heaven with dad. Mm. But, um, Mine too. Yeah, we missed that. Uh, but she must've been uh, quite 
happy to see that. I'm I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, so, so you, you know, the, those shows just inspired you to want to do what you were watching. Well, basically I'll tell you the truth, Alan. Um, <laughs> I'm the youngest of 10 children. So I was desperately needy for attention. And my mom and I bonded watching her soap operas. She went back to work and um, she had me come home from kindergarten uh, with a babysitter there at the house. You know, I'd watch the show, call her up at work and tell her what happened. So none of the other children, the other nine older ones, had any kind of relationship with her around the shows. So that was our special thing. That was our I bond. Your and bond. I wanted more than anything to make my mother proud of me, to see me on TV and be proud of me and excited. That's, and that's, that's where the awesome. dream began. And it actually- I love that. And it came bizarre. true. I mean, that's- Yeah. You know, that, that's gotta be a mind blowing experience too. That it, it truly, it, truly was. And I'll tell you just a little tidbit. Um, you remember Douglas Marlin? Of course. Douglas is a legend. Mm -hmm. Douglas and I once hung out and got to talking and he shared with me that his mother's name was B, B Snyder. And I said, Douglas, my mother's name is B, B Snyder. And he said, wait, what? And it turned out he's born on May 5th. That's my mother's birthday. Uh, oh his God. name, Julie's name was Julie Wendell. Then she married yeah. Snyder. Yeah. My father's name was Joe Wendell Snyder. Oh my God. My best friends from life were Babette Props, who played Ellie Snyder, and um, Jenny Ash, who played Meg Snyder. I knew yeah. Jenny from New York. I knew Renee Babette. She goes by Renee or Babette. I don't know. Um, from LA and then wow. they both came on the show and then I came on and later married Caleb and became their <laughs> sister-in-law and we were all Snyders. That so is crazy. His name Snyder keeps coming up and I don't know why. It's bizarre. Yeah, bizarre. I, I spoke to Jennifer Ash. I, I wanted ah. to have her and I just, uh, I hope to call her again. She, it just was I it took a long time to get back to her. I have not found Renee Props, who I would love as well. She's that, keeping it, a low profile these days. Yeah, there's a lot of people. So I don't know if you know, there's a soap writer, um, not a soap, like he didn't write uh, for the soaps. He's a press person, Michael Maloney. He said he heard a rumor that Doug Marlin said Julie would have a career for life as long as he was around. Did you ever oh, hear that? No, but that makes <laughs> me cry. Uh, yeah, I mean that. I, I don't. Oh. Michael. Michael's pretty. Michael Maloney knows his stuff and and is pretty pretty, uh, in the know of many things. So, as the world turns, what do you remember about the audition? And did you have to screen test? Oh my gosh, no, I didn't because, well, let me be very clear. Um, Ryan's hope and um, Another World, those were day player parts. Yeah. I didn't have contracts. I only had contracts on Santa Barbara and As the World Turns. So I started as a day player on As the World Turns. Ah, and so they didn't need to screen test you yet? No. Uh, yeah. and it, you remember Duke? Yeah, Michael Loudon, right? The late Michael Loudon. Well, I was supposed to be Duke's girlfriend in Seattle. And she was bad news and she's trying to convince him to go work with Vince, you know, the thug. And um, in fact, I, I think I was one of the only people that ever smoked a cigarette on daytime TV, you know, in those days. But I wanted to, I don't know, send a message of, you know, this character of this person. I just, but, you know, I smoked the cigarette. And, and then afterwards they said, you know, you're not supposed to smoke cigarettes on TV. But why didn't somebody stop me? <laughs> but, you know, Julie was a tough character and Oof. I needed to dive in and get inside her psyche. Of course, I fell in love with her because I realized all of her, her vulnerabilities. And, and that's probably why the fans fell in love with her. 
because she, yeah. you know, they really did. Yeah, she was, she was pretty dear, near and dear to my heart. Great character. Do you, do you remember your first day in Oakdale? Oh yeah, I remember. I opened the door, uh, I was sitting in Duke's apartment and uh, my first scene was with Larry Brigman who played Dr. Dixon. Yeah, that, that and we hadn't and, even met yet, you know. And here we are filming on the set. Uh, he knocks on the door of Duke's apartment, and I whip open the door and just glare at him. And he just—he—he he was speechless. He—he he forgot his lines. We had to because <laughs> I was so prepared. I was prepped. <laughs> did, did did anyone like oh, not, not warn you? But did anyone you know like? That's, you know, Larry Brigman. <laughs> I didn't know who Larry Brigman was. I watched ABC yeah. soaps. You know, I, knew, I knew who Susan Lucci was. Right, right. You would have been <laughs> peeing into your pants if it was. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. that, that is something else. That is something else. What, what do you remember about Michael, Michael Loudon? He was an interesting character. And, uh, and you, you said, I, I, uh, and I'm just blanking, Michael passed away, Michael Lavin, because I know Michael David Morrison, of course. Did. They both, both. Both, yeah. both. Yeah. Yeah. That's another well. story. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, fans were definitely asking about, you know, Michael David. What, what do yeah. you remember? I mean, people, Julian, yeah. Cal Julian Caleb. Yeah. That was uh, really challenging. Um, Michael. He was going through a lot. Morrison was a, an addict. I'm sure that's not a secret. No, definitely not. And uh, he really, he really fought his demons. He had some dark, dark demons mm. uh, that followed him, and he tried to stuff away, like so many people, with alcohol and drugs. And he had a, a he had a. He had a second life. I don't know how you, he had a dual life. Um, so he was doing a lot of, he was doing a lot of dangerous things mm. and it got caught up with him. He was married. He had a child, a beautiful child and wife, really loving, very, very loving family. And um, it, he just couldn't. He couldn't compete with the demons, sadly. Exactly. Yeah, it's not a unusual story. No. Uh, addiction, it, I mean, addiction is real, but you know, so many people struggle with it. And it's, yeah, uh, but he know, came, it, he, he came to my dressing room the night before he, I say he committed suicide because uh, it was an OD, but he came and told me that either he had to get sober that day or he was going to kill himself. And I said, Michael, can't you do it for your son? Think of your son. And he just, by the next day, he was on. So, um, the part of me that was Julie, Ooh. Ooh. that was in love with the part of him that was Caleb, and it was such a passionate relationship. When he died, I grieved for him like a widow, even though I was married to, to Peter Boynton right. uh, and Michael, and I were. You know, he was challenging. He was he was a hard person to. Well, I'm sure dealing with, you know, anybody dealing with those kind of demons makes right. it more Exactly. You know, but they, re they replaced him. They had Graham Winton, like, kind of standing by because Michael had gone to rehab a couple times already. Mm. So Graham Winton very graciously and beautifully stepped in. Um, I mean, and that's, I mean, it, it, it's not easy, you know, as you know, for people to step in and fill roles that were so beloved. Oh, but no to, way. But, but to fill a role <laughs> at a, uh, at a tragic time like that, you know, kudos to Graham and, and yes. kudos to all, kudos to all of you for, I'm sure, helping Graham get through that because it's, you know, I you were, I'm sure you weren't the only one grieving. I mean, the whole Snyder family, I'm sure, oh. it, you know, it, devastating to lose yeah, somebody it, like that. It was basically like having an out of body experience, trying to film these scenes with Graham, talking to him like he's, I mean, 
talk about surreal. Yeah. Yeah, it was very challenging. And anyway. Wow. Let's let's talk about some of some of your other men. Scott DeFreitas. <laughs> oh, Scott D. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that was another popular couple. People oh, love Scotty D. <laughs> Scotty D, I know. Yes. Love. Yeah, we had so much fun. He was just such a wonderful actor and just such a nice guy, you know, just really down to earth and good people. Really an excellent actor. I mean, he grew up on that soap, you know? Yeah. John Hensley. Oh, yeah. The best looking man I've ever seen in my life. First of all, <laughs> I am. I couldn't speak. I literally could not speak. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's well, and James Wilczek as well is pretty handsome. Oh, sure. Yeah. Link, Link. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I can't think of who your oh, husband Peter was. Oh, Peter Boynton, of course. Well, Peter, of course. And, oh, and, yeah. And, and, and I didn't mean your husband. I meant Julie's husband, um, Keith oh. Pruitt, right? Keith Pruitt was your husband. Oh, the first one. Uh, yeah, the first one when you got there. Oh, yeah, Wendell. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't think He's of his first name. First yeah, name. Uh, something Pruitt. Yeah, Keith Pruitt? Yeah, Keith Pruitt, right, but I can't think of Wendell's first name. Um, yeah, what was his of, name? Anyway. Yeah, one of our friends. <laughs> <Keith, laughs> it was uh, Jason Biggs' father. Right. Wendell's father. Yeah, and, and a lot of fans were asking earlier while we were uh, getting you set up, um, did you ever think Jason would rise to the uh, level of stardom he has? yeah. Actually, Graham Winton said, uh, that kid's a star. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay, you're right about that. Um, you're right about that. Yeah. So, yeah, he was super talented, young, I don't know, 15. We used to chase each other up and down the halls at CBS. You know, he was just a kid. <laughs> and um, he was my date to the Emmys the year that he was nominated for an award. It was just really fun. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that show really, you know, the amount of talent that walked through that, those doors is incredible. Oh my gosh. Marissa Tomei, Julianne yeah. Moore. Oh, how about Lauren Hill from the food Yeah, team? correct. I Meg mean, Ryan. Correct. Oh, Meg Ryan. Yeah. I remember the day, um, it was Jessica's wedding, Jessica and Duncan's wedding. And they asked Lauren, they found out that she could sing. Okay. She's like 14 or 15 at this <laughs> And, and we were all standing around watching the taping and Lauren sang and we all just looked at each other, our jaws dropped, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Knew she was a superstar, you know? It was just obvious. And then of course, <laughs> the Fugees. Yeah, seriously. Um, Michael Halland was asking, who were some of the actors you admired on the show and, and what do you think you learned from them? Oh my gosh, so many. Well, of course, Lucinda Walsh. <laughs> I mean, going toe to toe. <laughs> Elizabeth toe -to Hubbard is a, just, you know. Going toe to toe with her, what, what's that like? You know, um, I could have been very, very intimidated, but I dove so deeply into Julie that Julie wasn't intimidated by Lucinda at all. She knew her. She recognized her and could go toe to toe with her. Um, can I just say that um, Mama Snyder. Kathleen. The lovely Kathleen Widows, dear and near to my heart forever, was just such a delight to work with on the studio. It was so funny and just, just always fresh and you never knew what was gonna come out of her mouth. No. Yeah, and you mean fresh in a in a fresh way because I know yeah, she's fresh. Yeah, to I, flash I, you, the flash yes. the camera people. You know this. Yeah, I do. You the, know this. So, some of the male actors have been on and said yes. My introduction to Kathleen was she would literally flash me. So yeah. we had some good laughs. Yeah, um, that's my girl. 
<laughs> ah, that's so funny. Soap yeah. Suds is a, a fan who watches and he said, oh. I'd love I'd love for her to discuss the fa I think it's a he. Sorry, I said he. Soap Suds, I don't know the person. They. Name. They. I'd love for her to discuss the fantastic remote she did at Holden and Li Lily's wedding when she pulls up in the oh. limousine and rolls down the window oh. like a classic <laughs> Friday oh. cliffhanger. Oh, so what do you remember? What do you remember about that? I window? remember exactly that. What he just described. <laughs> I was wearing a fur coat and it must have been July. And I'm in a, it's just ridiculous, you know, just I'm in this limousine. I'm pulling up in front of Holden and Lily's in this beautiful little white church, a picturesque setting. And I don't even know if I had any lines that day. I was just there to, ooh, you know, what she oh, no. it's, it's like a perfect cliffhanger. Roll down the oh, window yeah. and don't, don't say anything. <laughs> it's hilarious. Just hilarious. And now and when hold, I watch. And hold that stare. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and Friday's... hold those tears. Don't let them drop. Just hold them. It's yeah. so funny. Was there someone who took you under your wings when you got there? You know, I'm sure, like you said, oh, the other, the other and, oh, okay, yeah. And Jenny. Oh, yeah, my girls were there. So were the three of you like, you know, uh, a trio of trouble? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any good stories you can share? Any fun? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> I mean, we just, um, you know, you, you you had to show up. You had to be prepared. You had to. Nobody, nobody wanted to waste anybody's time. You know, and tempers would flare if you weren't on your game. You didn't hit your mark. You didn't get in your light. You didn't know your lines. You know, and we only had maybe three or four rehearsals. Bef you know, on set before. Okay, tape. You know, we didn't have the luxury of of doing a half an hour show every week. We did an hour show every day, basically. If you were you know, on a front burner storyline, I went home with a script every night with pages and pages and pages that I had to show up and have memorized for the next day, you know? So mm -hmm. running lines was the most important thing in my life. <laughs> Because I, it's like a muscle. You have to do push-ups in order to. Yeah. Was it easy for you? Learn? No. <laughs> I was terrified of <laughs> learning so many lines every day. And all these people are professionals and, you know, they're good at it. And I had to learn how to get good at it. I would get up so early in the morning. I would walk to work every day, running my lines down the, the you know, Broadway. <laughs> so in the day. funny cell phones there <laughs> saw me walking down the street talking to myself like a crazy person but yeah, you know, typical today. typical new york city exactly i fit right and in you fit right in uh, i i must say uh we have kevin joining us uh at 4 45 in the morning from japan mm. so wow wow um, that's pretty pretty, <laughs> pretty good um what was it the aging thing we discussed earlier? Is that what prompted you to retire from acting? Yes. And okay. I couldn't get a job. And my agents dropped me. Wow. <laughs> right after I, you know, it was, I don't know if you understand what happened uh, with the whole storyline, the Snyder storyline. Um, no, I don't know what happened when you left. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there was a major uh, exodus of the the storyline, um, it, was, it was economics. They brought in a hatchet man. They fired uh, our executive producer who loved everybody, brought in a hatchet man who cut the cast in half, brought on all these younger actors at half the price. There you go. People will still yeah. watch the show. They might not you know, like it, but um, that's just the way it goes. Who, who was the EP the that they let go? Was it Lawrence? Oh, Lawrence Queso. Lawrence Queso, that's what I thought. Yeah. Wow, that's a bummer. Yeah, but you know um, what? Life, life goes on. And it opened up a lot of doors. Douglas Marlin at that point had died. So they yeah. were not willing to pay royalties to his estate. Period. On all of his characters, in his contracts, he got royalties for all of his characters. Oh, wow. I don't think I knew that. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. 
Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's your Procter it, it and Gamble. <laughs> yeah, it's a it, it's a money business for sure, all around. Sadly, yeah. sadly, sadly. What are some of your happiest memories from there? Oh gosh, just the laughter, you know, and the 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 part that I played was open to so many opportunities for just creative embellishments. Um, I remember Julie as, uh, oh, she found some money in a ditch or something. It was ransom money that had gotten paid for, for somebody got kidnapped or I don't remember exactly, but I found it and kept it. And I told Caleb that I had won a sweepstakes and that's where all that money came from, you know, and now I can really help the Snyder family. And um, so I got to play Angel Devil Julie, you know, um, yeah. just fun stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, I guess I was. I mean, you worked with everybody. You really yeah. did. You know, yeah. You, you, yeah. You had the opportunity to work with everybody. Yeah. It was good. What what do you remember about ruthless people? Oh, it was short and sweet. I mean, um, I worked with Judge Reinhold, you know, a real pro, John Cutler. It's uh, such a funny movie. Do you, it's do you, such a funny uh, movie. It really holds up after all these years. Oh, I could watch that. I think all the time. It's, I know. Yeah. I wished I'd met Bette Midler and Danny DeVito, <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, which is funny because Babette Renee Props, she ended up working with John DeVito, uh, D Danny DeVito and John Travolta in, go, what was that, Get Shorty? Oh, yeah, yeah, Get Shorty. They've yeah. both been in movies with Danny DeVito, but I never met him. But um, our scene was just, you know, it's a, it's a day shoot. It was just hit it and quit it. Pretty simple, straightforward comedy. And, and you said you knew them both before you got there? Did yeah. You, how did you I know met, them? I met, we call her props. I met props at, a, at an audition for Facts of Life back in the day in LA. Uh, and that's back well, in the day. <laughs> in the day, you know. So um, don't you love the 80s? Like, <laughs> yeah, 80s TV is the best. <laughs> Big hair and, and yeah. ads. Anyway, so we were sitting together at this long audition for facts of life and they told everybody to wait because they were going to make the decision right then and it was only for like a day player a few lines or whatever well neither one of us got chosen and i said let's go have breakfast so we went to denny's and had breakfast and uh we were friends ever since and she was dating chad Lowe at the time which i was amazed at you know and so we would hang out with chad Lowe and go to his place in malibu and yeah, that was our relationship. Jenny Ash, I met the same way, except for in New York. And, you know, we were blonde and blue eyed and we went to all the same auditions. And so finally we said, let's be friends and just hung out. You know, I lived with her in her apartment for a short time when I lived there. So, yeah, it was just really remarkable, the synchronicities that led yeah, to it, the three of you <laughs> being in the same the same place. I mean, that. That Being have, related, you know, sisters. You, right, that that too. Sisters. Right, not not only ended yeah. up in the same place working, but also connected. Mm -hmm. And what a what a family that Snyder family. I mean, especially oh, yeah. especially Bill, during you your time there. Bill Fickner. Oh yeah, yeah. He was also a super talented guy. Um, yeah. yeah, everybody. There was no slackers there, none, zero. None whatsoever. <laughs> but but before, before Oakdale, you had a role on Santa Barbara as yes. Lake, and, Lake and Lockridge. Ugh. Who Thank was you. she? Oh, you know, she was a rich girl living on a trust fund, didn't have a whole lot of direction, you know, held a flame for, for uh, Capwell, Ted Capwell played by Todd McKee. And um, yeah, she was fun, party girl, kind of bored and looking to cause trouble a little bit. 
you know, she wasn't something, really something about you causing trouble. And <laughs> I'm the good at play. it. You're, you're good at it. Matthew yeah. is asking, did, did you work with Nicholas Coster and Dame Judith Anderson? Oh, I worked with Nick. Yeah. Nick uh, was super fun. Uh, no, I didn't work with Dame Judith Anderson. No. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Lenore Kasdorf was his wife at the time. Oh yeah. She was on Guiding Light many, many decades ago. And Jane Sibbett played my stepsister and Jane Sibbett and I are soul sisters. We've been friends forever since then. Oh, that's awesome. She played Jane on Santa Barbara. Yeah. Who was the executive producer when you were there? Do you remember? Jill Fahrenfeld. Phelps, I believe. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Okay. Great. You just interviewed her. I did. Yeah, she was great. Mm -hmm. you know, fans, fans are uh, very vocal about Jill, to say the least. <laughs> oh, wow. They have, they have strong opinions, uh, you know, because she's worked <sighs> with so, so many different shows. <laughs> so many different shows. Um, what prompted you to get into documentary filmmaking? Well, I wanted to tell stories, but I was tired of being in front of the camera. Like I said, I, I wanted to be behind the camera and see what kind of stories I could tell. I like real people. I like real stories. I find them very compelling. Mm -hmm. And so the first film I worked on, I was mentoring under a master filmmaker and he brought me on board to work on a film called The Story of Marit in the White World. Marit Raleigh, she is a, an adult woman. She has um, autism and she wanted to become a filmmaker. So the idea was to document her journey becoming a, into becoming a document, actually not a documentary filmmaker, a narrative filmmaker. So what, what, what's the difference? Well, one is true story. One is fiction. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Fact fiction. Yeah. Um, so we were going to make a documentary about her making her, her um, fiction. Um, but we found we ran into a lot of problems communicating with her because, you know, it's difficult sometimes with an autistic person um, they don't like to talk to you. They don't like to make eye contact. So we figured out that if we asked her a question and sent her home with the camera, she would answer the question to the camera in a beautifully eloquent way that she couldn't speak to directly one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, wow. We used a lot of her footage. She called them self documentaries. Um, to tell her own story. And then we went on to do a, a theater production that she actually wrote and she starred in. And it was oh. a huge hit in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, it was sold out. Uh, she was on the front page of the Sunday Times, full page, color, everything. It was just unheard of that a woman with autism could star in her own play, you know, and it was a profoundly affecting uh, experience. I worked on this film for three years and it's available for free on YouTube, the story of Marit in the white world. Um, it's wow. profoundly moving, um, the whole experience, but it gave me the skills I needed. And I thought at the time I was just going to be an editor. Um, when I moved to Hawaii within six months, I was asked to co-direct a film about <laughs> the uh, eruption back then in 2014. <laughs> so I've been here for a couple of them. Um, it's called Aloha from Lava Land. And um, I co-directed that one, also did some of the cinematography. Um, Phil Payson co-directed that with me and edited it, did a beautiful job. And um, that one ended up going on Hawaiian Airlines. They they put it on their interflight entertainment station for like six months. So uh, we screened it in Paris. It was really well received um, and also very near and dear to my heart. Wow. So um, if you send me the link to the, the one about the autistic 
woman. I'll put that up on the YouTube so it, people can check it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll I'm afraid that. to do it right now. Yeah, yeah. No, no. When we're, when, <laughs> when we're, when we're I don't done. want to touch anything. <laughs> no, don't touch. We're, are we're you, rolling. are you looking, is there another documentary in your mind that you'd like to do? Or is there a, a dream documentary you'd love to make? Well, there's so many, but right now we just finished this rather lengthy novel co-written by my partner, Elijah yes. Carter. I'm, ho I'm holding uh, it up again. Thank you. And I have the websites up on screen for people oh, to go. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I, I started it last night. I'm really enjoying it. I, I'm not a fast oh. reader, but I, I <laughs> you, you, you hooked me and I, you know, I, I wasn't able to put it down. So. Well, if you just read the foreword, it gives you the yeah. back. You I, know, I, I thought it that was a really... true story about one of my dearest friends who had had an experience with Elijah here um, that really sets the stage for the story because um, he he has this uh, technique. He calls it the holistic self healing program that he's been doing for several years. And he's a former physical therapist. He was a very successful physical therapist in Denver, had multiple clinics all over, sold it all because he was just too stressed out and he was gonna have a heart attack if he didn't leave. Um, but he developed this program. Uh, it's a way to really bring your ancestral lineage into harmony. It's the best way I can say it in a nutshell. Um, he doesn't even have to touch you, you know, it's more energetic. Um, so my friend, she had this experience where she fell and just tear, tore up her knee and we were right by Elijah's house. So we went in and he put her on the massage table and I'm not going to tell you everything that happened, um, but it was pretty miraculous. And I've seen a lot of this kind of stuff. I've seen a lot of very strange and interesting and wonderful healings with this technique. So he wrote a manual, which he said he sat down to read and it was like reading a car manual. Yeah, I love that. I love totally I love, boring. Yeah, boring. Yeah. So he asked me if I could help him because I was one of his clients. I'm like, you know, I need to take care of this ancestral. Is stuff. that is that how you met? Oh, yes. I was a I was his client. Um, but he knew I had a background doing theater production, all that stuff. He said, can you help me dialogue this book in characters? And I said, yes. And we had the greatest time. And this huge book came out of it. And huge book. <laughs> yeah. I, nobody yeah. planned to write a huge book. But no, I mean. It, it, all the information is, it's so. Almost 400 pages. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's 400. Um, we couldn't but, any of it. It was just everything needed to be said, and it just did. So. And what, what was it? like doing it together like it was amazing were you, were you just sitting down and and talking out characters and in the and the plot and how did you we, we did it all we we acted out the characters we role played we you know um improved uh we would He'd sit down and write. He wrote the whole book longhand, first of all. I typed every one of those words in that book because wow. when he sat down at this tiny little table with his legal notepad, his hand would just fly. You know, he couldn't even control his hand. It would just fly. The words would just come, 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 come. And he'd rip the pages off and give them to me, and I'd type, 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 type. And then we'd read it out loud, um, so we spent basically the whole quarantine doing this, which was perfect. We didn't have any distractions. There's, there's a lot of people I know who wrote during, you know, which is really great. They really- I know, it was perfect. So um, yeah, that was basically the, the, the process. It was really fun and it happened really quick considering the size of the, the tome <laughs> that you're holding in your yeah, hand. Yeah, it's, it, it's true. Um, do you have another idea? Would you like to write more? Did you did you ever actually think you would write a book? No. No, it was just me as a, originally just helping him. 
but it became so obvious that it was a collaboration instead of me just as a hired gun, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. book. Um, yeah. So well, congratulations. I, I, thanks I, so I, much. I, I, I plan to continue. Um, Frank Wendell, one of our fans wrote, that was his oh, name. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. Wow, Frank. thank you so much. <laughs> um, I'm looking if I missed anyone's questions earlier while they were. Oh, Somebody was Me Melanie oh, Smith, sorry. right? Oh, was that oh. when you were there? Oh, yeah. Now, somebody had sent uh, in the private, uh, I don't know, on the side of YouTube when you posted yep. two things, something about that scene with Iva and Lily and me and Lucinda when Aaron's true paternity is revealed. I don't know oh, what yeah, they yeah. about that scene, but I found it on YouTube. I posted the link. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, it was, um, it was intense working with these high powered divas, you know, that whole storyline was exhausting. It was just so much drama, tears and all yeah, of that. Julie <laughs> cried a lot. Yeah. Those tear ducts got in shape. <laughs> One of our fans was asking if you ever pitched story for Julie. Uh, no, they didn't really ask us to pitch story. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't Although, think so. Although, when we got our scripts, you know, the writers they had an impossible task to write for thirty-six, forty voices. So they did a very generic kind of tried to convey convey the storyline but every day we'd get the scripts we would rewrite all of our lines so i have been writing uh right i wrote my own lines every you know every script i got i had to change them to my own voice to to julie's voice to be consistent so yeah i've been writing but not quite the same do you have a favorite um storyline during the, your time there a favorite storyline. Um, well, I loved working with Jason. It was really fun. And he was just such a brat. And that was, <laughs> that was before you became a mom, correct? Yeah, I guess so. Because I left for a while. And then Douglas called me at home. He said, I have a great idea for a storyline with Julie and Holden. And he said, Julie's pregnant by Holden's baby. I said, Douglas, I'm pregnant by Tonio's baby. <laughs> he said, oh my God. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so I played pregnant on TV while I was pregnant with my daughter, uh, Logan Brighton. <laughs> and, and Aaron went from being born to being like 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that, that's how they do it. That's how yeah, they do fast it. Fast forward. Yeah. Fast forward. And so he was forward. extremely good looking, of course, just like his Oh, friend. totally. I love a game. A game's great. <laughs> a game is a good guy who has oh. two children himself now. <gasps> oh, <laughs> hi, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what happened to Julie because sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I, I was told that she had cancer. Then I heard oh. she recovered. All I know yeah. is put me and Caleb on a Greyhound bus and sent us off to Seattle. And that was the last I ever heard of Julie. Uh, Julie. Uh, so many missed opportunities sometimes in, in daytime, but you know, it does revolve around money and you know, it, it's, it's such a, it, it's such a great medium that we all loved, but because so many hands are involved, just, yes. you, you know, so many, so many missed things. Um, Steven Bergman sends his love. Do you remember Steven? <gasps> of he used course to I do. <laughs> Steven says hello. He I was just that. watching. Hey, Steven. Um, thank you so much for spending time with me today. This was so great. I'm so glad we were able to get the audio working at least. Yeah. Um, I have the link up. I'm holding the book up. I hope everyone checks it out. Like I said, I'm really enjoying this. Love the harmonizing essence. Yeah. Susan, Zen. Thank you. Yeah. Such a pleasure to meet you. I really appreciate you spending some time here. And, you know, maybe one of these days I'll get back to 
Hawaii. I think I told you my husband and I spent our honeymoon on Kauai and Oahu. And our uh, goal was to come every five years. But then uh -huh. in 2018, we had to detour to Italy, which isn't so bad either. But oh, boom. <laughs> isn't what so a bummer. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, but, it, is your partner Ray? It is. Yes, he is. Yeah, yes. Not he it. is. You look <laughs> very is. happy. And I'm, I'm yeah. so pleased. You've got oh, an organizing essence, obviously, in your relationship, which, you know, I, I wish everyone. <laughs> I got lucky. I got lucky. Yes, you must have done something right. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, you stay well. Best of luck with the book and stay in touch. All right. Aloha. Bye-bye. Aloha. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, don't forget to pick up the book. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Sorry for the technical difficulties. That happens when we're doing something live on the internet. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications to get reminders of all upcoming shows. And tomorrow I will see you with Murray Bartlett from HBO Max's The White Lotus. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.